I should start by saying, I am sorry. I am sorry that you are the one who must read about my misdeeds and my past. You are either a police investigator, a jury member, or an innocent bystander. I should start by introducing myself. I am Jake Martin, otherwise known as the Confession Killer. All stories have a beginning, and mine is no exception. My childhood was a good one, really. No abuse or deep, dark secret. My father died when I was young, but my mother raised me very well. She worked hard and made sure I was taken care of. I joined the military, finished my contract without much hassle or much fanfare. An everyday story, really. Nothing great or even tragic. Rather boring, huh? So, if that is so, how did I become a killer? Well, that's where the true story starts. After the Army, I got a job doing what I knew, security work. Most places see the veteran label on the resume and poof, hired. We detail-oriented and we finished mission with no problem. I'm not a small guy, nor am I a big guy. I'm 5'10", 215 pounds. I gained some weight after the Army, but not a whole lot. I let my beard grow and I kept my head shaved out of habit. Most people look past me as I'm just a faceless background character in the story. And I'm okay with that, and my line of work in security, blending in helps a lot whenever you're trying to catch the bad guys doing bad things. The bosses don't even know my real name. They call me Matt, Mike, Jimmy, when they see me in the halls at work. I even have people ask for my work ID even though I, they saw me the day before. I chuckle about it. It just means people do things they won't normally do around security. It happens in the civilian world, too. It was the 3rd of January. I was invited to an after New Year's party at a local bar by a co-worker. I'm not a party guy really, but I felt I needed to go. Try something new for the new year, I guess. I arrived at the bar earlier than my co-workers, which means I was alone when I walked in. It was a rather small, semi-open place. The string lights around the bar and the neon lights of the type of beer cut the darkness. It was a beach bar type of place. The bar was about half full of your normal bar types. There was the after work people, just want to drink after a long week. There was the start weekenders, drink till they black out. The hookups, looking for the new baby mama or daddy. And the social types, they're here to rule over the peasants. I did not fit in with any of these types. So I found a corner of the bar and ordered a coffee and waited. I know what you're thinking. A coffee? Yes, a coffee. I do not have a designated driver, so I will not be drinking tonight. After about 30 minutes, my co-workers showed up and found me drinking coffee in the corner. They joked about how they should have known and ordered themselves some beers. In total, there were five of us. I could tell that I was not one of the group, really, but I was not an outcast that I thought I would be. Just like at work, most people look past me. It has never bothered me, even now it doesn't. I find it helps me with my habit of people watching. I tend to study their movements and body language to see what they really mean when they talk to people. There's a couple that just sat down for me at the bar. The guy was trying so hard to impress the girl, but she was busy looking for her next boyfriend. There was a group of ladies in the corner. It seemed one of them had just had a breakup, and all but one of them was trying to cheer her up. The one I would assume was happy about it. She kept looking at her phone and texting, but hiding it from the others. The amount of smoke and noise at the bar started to get to me, so I went outside. There was a patio area that was attached, so I never really left. The air was still smoke-filled, but not as bad as the inside. I took some deep breaths to clear my lungs, and when I heard it, a woman was crying and a guy was yelling. The woman was in her early 20s with brown hair, wearing a sundress. I remember the sundress because it was yellow and it shined in the neon lights. Her makeup was running down her face. You cheated on me. Cheated means you are something more than just a piece of ass. But you said you loved me. And your dumb ass believed me? But I, I may be pregnant. You know where the clinic is. No, I am not going to do that. You better. I ain't paying for a kid. She completely breakdowns and runs off. The guy was really mill ass. 
who wore designer clothes even down to his socks and shoes. Teddy even bat an eye and even looked my way. At this point, I was about done for the night anyway. I went back to my co-workers and made my excuses to leave and left. I made it to my car when I saw the lady from before. She was about 5'5", five five, small belly. The only reason I saw was because the passing car headlights shone through her dress. She looked stunning, except for the makeup running down her face. I stood motionless as she sobbed. Before I knew it, I called out to her. Ma'am, are you okay? She spun around and stammered. What? No, no, no. No, I'm, I'm fine. I just had an argument with my boyfriend. It'll be okay. Are you sure? Yes, it happens often. Well, if you were sure. She smiled meekly as I unlocked my truck and climbed inside. My gut was in knots that drove away. Looking back, I should have listened to it. It would be for a few days until I found out what happened. The 5th of January. I got gotten up my normal 6 a.m. and started my day. Shower, made breakfast, coffee, and started watching the news. That's when her face reappeared in my life with the words, Young woman's body found after search. It seemed a few hours after I left the bar, she jumped off the bridge. My gut was flipping and eating itself at this point. Why did I not stay in hell? Why did I not do more? Something was not right. Something is not making sense. It hit me. She said she was keeping the baby. If she was, then why would she jump? There was no reason she would. I started to watch every news broadcast, read every article, and report of her death. I became obsessed. To the point, I even went to her funeral. 8th January The funeral was a big affair. There was only a standing room when I arrived. Her mom and dad sat in front crying as the guests gave them their condolences. It was being held at this funeral home that had a chapel laced with flowers and pictures of the deceased. I looked around trying to find the guy from that night. I waited and waited to the point I was one of the very last few people left at the end. I walked behind the rest as they took the coffin to the gravesite. No one seemed to notice me much. It was eerie because I didn't even remember her name. Even today I don't remember it. I guess it's not what's important. The guy never showed up. It was like he was not even involved in her life. The army kept running through my head. Their words echoed in my ears as I walked away from the funeral. Her face haunted me for weeks, and her voice could be heard throughout my house. I would see a glimpse of her everywhere I went. I knew I had to do something, or she would haunt me for the rest of my life. Every day I became more and more convinced she did not jump that night. I became convinced she was killed. But by whom? Only one person came to mind. 7th of February. I started going to the club. I saw them at every Friday looking for him. It was a month from the funeral. He showed up. He had a new female in his arm and was showing her off to anybody who would look. I watched his every move. He bought rounds for a table of people that were overdressed for this place. I assumed they were some type of influential society. You could tell he was trying to show off. I watched him all night till he left rather drunk climbed to his sports car and drove off. Maybe he was with to pass off someone else at the table he was buying drinks for. That just pissed me off more. I followed him that night hoping he would drive off the road and die in a single big crash. But he didn't. I started to call the cops when a possible drunk driver just getting pulled over. But I wanted something more. I didn't realize it. There was something in my soul taking root. Fourteen March. I watched him for weeks at this point. Every Friday, he would go to that bar and follow the same pattern. He'd walk in, show off his new arm candy, buy drinks, and either take the lady to a hotel or pass her off to someone else. Every day, I hated him more and more. It was like she didn't even matter to him. How do you know if he had anything to do with her dying? He would not tell me if I asked him straight out. I need to convince him to tell me. It better scare him. 
a bit or something more. Looking back, why did it even matter to me? I don't even remember her name. She was not someone I even knew. We only had that one short exchange. She was not my lover, friend, or even family. So why did I feel the need to learn what happened that night? The only thing I knew was I needed to do something, and soon. 12 April. I've been buying tools over the last few months just for tonight. A few knives, plastic sheeting, new power tools, miscellaneous other stuff. I don't have a plan other than getting access to this house and getting the answers I need. I packed my tools into a simple looking toolbox and headed to his house. He lived in the rich part of town with a big yard, so the neighbors were a ways away. I slipped in his backyard easy enough. I knew he didn't have any security systems, nor did he have a dog. He even left his patio door unlocked. I started setting up my territory. I was covered head to toe. Goggles, painter's mask, gloves, painter's suit, and booties. I chuckled at what I looked like. He should be home soon. He should be finishing up at the hotel with his new lady. My territory is a sheet of plastic in the middle of his workout room. It had a full wall of mirrors, a padded floor, and some soundproofing. I pulled a heavy oak chair from the dining room to serve as his throne. I laid out my tools like I was a surgeon getting ready for a life-saving operation. Maybe I was about to save a life. Time seemed to take forever as I cleaned my tools and waited. I started to sweat my uniform. I caught myself muttering, What is... What is... Why is he taking so long? I just needed to wait. I heard a car drive up and I knew my wait was over. I grabbed my improvised sap, just a leather bag filled with sand and ball bearings. I had only one shot to knock him out before he, there would be a struggle. I knew if he fought, there was a chance I would lose. I heard his keys in the door as I moved in position. He walked in, tossed his keys on the table, and staggered to the bathroom. I knew there'd be no better time than when he was taking a piss. He never heard me creeping up behind him. Granted, he did end up falling in the bathtub pissing all over himself and me. I moved him to the throne with some struggling as it tied his hands, arms, ankles, thighs, calves, and neck to the chair to make sure he could not move. I just needed to wait for him to wake up. It took a few hours for him to wake up. I even thought I killed him at one point. I did treat his head wound, cleaned up the blood and piss. I'm not a monster after all. His face when he came to was priceless. The slow realization that he was bound to his throne, facing the mirror with me standing behind him on my territory was something I could never express in words. I started off the exchange, rather pleasant. Good morning. I hope your injury isn't too bad. What the fuck do you think you're doing? What the fuck are you? Now, now. Let's be more civilized than this. I'm going to kill you, you son of a bitch. I hit him, busting his nose. I said, let's be more civilized. Motherfucker, I'm going to kill him. I hit him again. If you keep this up, I will become less civilized. His nose was pouring blood at this point. Fuck you. I took the ice pick I brought, plunged it into his right hand, pinning it to the oak chair. He let out a scream, but I took the towel I had over my shoulder and gagged him with it. I waited till he stopped screaming before I leant down close to his ear. Now, let's try this again. Good morning. I hope your injuries are not severe. I slowly removed the towel, and I could see the once bravado he had was now fear. He was crying, whimpering. I, I, I'm, I'm in pain. Sorry. Let me clean your face up a bit. Why are you doing this? As evidence. 
Now let me start by asking your name. Why do you want me to know my name? To make sure I, was, I have the right person for the record. He stated his name, which I have removed from this record, but I added it to the recorded interview in the notes. Good, good. I have the right person. Do you know this person? I hold up the newspaper article with a female who is carrying his child. Who are you? Now that's a good question. I am of no one of importance. Now let's answer the questions, please. I don't know who that is. I twist the ice pick, causing him to scream again. I use the towel as a gag again. He calmed down. I removed the gag. Now please, do not insult me by lying to me. It is rather infuriating. Do you know who this young lady is? Yes, that is. I have removed her name from this record. But the full record is in the notes. Now, tell me what happened that night. And do not lie to me. What do you want me to tell you? <sighs> Why do you want to make this more difficult than it already is? I removed the ice pick and poured wooden clod over his hand. I noticed that all the thrashing around, he had started to cut his skin with the zip ties were. Oh, I am so sorry. I didn't think the zip ties would cut you. Let me clean up your wounds. I treated the wounds and ended up using a whole roll of duct tape, re-securing his hands and legs at a chair to make sure he wouldn't hurt himself any further. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. You are being more difficult. I picked up a blowtorch and lit it. His eyes shimmered with fear as it sparked life. I placed the tip of a flathead screwdriver in the blue flames and passed it from left to right and back again. His eyes never moved from the hypnotic sight. You may not believe this, but I am not a violent person. I even tried to live a very simple, peaceful life. Now, what happened that night? What do you want me to tell you? Tell me everything that happened that night, from the start. I pressed the tip of the glowing hot screwdriver to his left index finger's nail. I could smell the burning of the skin. It was a rather unpleasant smell, if I'm honest. It was impressive how the heated tip melted the fingernail and started to cook the tender skin underneath. He tried to scream, but I used the towel for a gag again. I moved again. He was crying hysterically now. Okay, I must be honest. This is my first time doing anything like this, so I'm sure I'll make some mistakes. Oh, where are my manners? I bet your mouth is dry. Here, drink some water. I don't plan on killing you. It will defeat my purpose if I kill you. He drinks the water through a straw. I use a towel to wipe his face. Now, feel better? Tell me what happened. He starts to tell me everything about what happened that night. He never realized I was there when they argued at the bar, so he lied about it. He tried to make it seem like he wanted the pregnancy, and she was against it. Oh! I see, that's noble of you. The only problem is, I know what happened that night, and you just lied to me again. The fear in his eyes and the sound of his desperation was intoxicating. I blindfolded and gagged him this time so he could not see and scream about what I was about to do. I had taken deck screws about four inches in length and placed a tip on the center of his kneecap. And with one quick motion, I started to drill the screw into his knees. He kept jerking around to four or five attempts to get the screw fully in. He must have passed out. He stopped moving by the end of it. Now I had to wait. So I cleaned him up and treated his wounds so the wound would not bleed nor get infected. He even pissed himself, poor guy. I took this time to re-secure the chair and set up for the next persuasion style.